target's about 50 yards away, huh? Yeah, it is. I'm about to spin it right down the middle. Now, take notes. <laughs> no way. You gotta be kidding me, man. What are you guys doing on the roof? We're just practicing. Well, get off before you break your neck. It's for a million dollars. Get off. The Eckridge Million Dollar Challenge is back. Enter at EckridgeFootball.com for your chance to win. You know she'd want that money. Welcome in, I'm Sam Monson along with Mike Renner. Today, Mike, we're gonna be talking about Notre Dame and are they playoff contenders after beating Michigan in week one. This is brought to you by Eckrich, the official smoked sausage of the college football playoffs. Mike, I'll tell you how we're gonna do this, right? I'm gonna give you some concerns about Notre Dame coming out of that first week and you're gonna tell me why it doesn't matter, why they can still be playoff contenders coming off the back of that. Give it so to me. The first one has gotta be quarterback Brandon Wimbush. He graded okay in that game, but even in that game, we saw some of the ugly Wimbush that can be there. Is he good enough to take them that far? Yeah, you think back to last year, it seemed like he played similarly the first half of the season, but then during the second half of the season, the wheels just completely fell off. He forgot how to throw spirals. Some of those games, he just couldn't complete a pass. This game, he was accurate enough, and I think the Notre Dame game plan suits him well enough to where if they can just get that Brandon Wimbush every single week, they are for sure national title contenders, they have for sure college football playoff contenders because the game plan was get it into the hands of their playmakers and use Wimbush as a rushing threat. Last season, Wimbush broke 27 tackles on 122 carries and scored 14 touchdowns with his legs. He is basically a running back playing quarterback, but he has a cannon for an arm. It's just not very accurate. This season, Notre Dame has two big wide receivers in Miles Boykin and Chase Claypool, both six foot four, 220 plus pounds. Just give them chances downfield. You saw his average depth of target in this game against Michigan was 14.8 yards down the field. He was just throwing bombs and letting those guys come down with it. Alizé Mack, also their big tight end, 6'5", 247 pounds. If you just give those guys chances down the field against college DBs, usually it's going to work out well for And you. we saw that in that game, those guys scoring touchdowns, just going up and taking it off the top of defensive backs when they were better positioned to do it. My second big question mark, though, it's on the offensive line. This was the best offensive line in the nation a season ago, but two guys going the first round to the NFL draft, Mike McGlinchey, Quentin Nelson, the left, guard, left tackle and left guard, and the first evidence of the guys replacing them wasn't exactly pretty. We had left tackle, junior left tackle, Liam Eikenberg having a PFF pass blocking grade under 10. This is a zero to 100 scale, mm -hmm. so if you're under 10, that's ugly. Yeah, the silver lining here, though, is Michigan's defensive line is the best defensive line they're going to face all season long until maybe if they face, you know, Ohio State or Bama in the college football playoff. Chase Winovich, Rashawn Gary, legit first-round prospects there. And, yes, a lot of tackles are going to get beat up by those guys. The other thing here, though, to remember is they still did fairly well in run blocking. They've had positive run blocking grades along that offensive line, which is good. So against one of the best defensive lines you're going to face all year, you still did well in the run game, which is going to have to be their calling card all season long. So I do think while it was pretty obvious that their offensive line was going to take a step back when you lose two top 10 picks, it's still going to be fairly solid. I liked what I saw from left guard Alex Bars. He still graded out well in this game. What else have you got on the plus side? What, what are the other uh, hallmarks of this Michigan or this Notre Dame team, excuse me, that can take them all the way to the, the national title? I think by far the most encouraging thing and what I saw that made them me think that they're legit national title contenders is their front seven. That's always been Notre Dame's biggest problem issue, getting after the passer and affecting opposing quarterbacks. In this game, they had a handful of guys capable of doing that, whether it's G defensive tackle Jerry Tillery, who made our college team of the week for across the entire NCAA, or whether it was linebackers blitzing with Tavon Cooney and Drew Tranquil at the second level, both very athletic linebackers. Cooney made a bunch of plays in the run game, in the passing game, and as a blitzer. So those guys can all do it all behind them. I think they can actually affect opposing passers, which is huge for them because they're not amazing on the back end, but if you get pressure on opposing quarterbacks, you don't have to be. Yeah, they, they were able to put Shea Patterson under pressure almost all game, make that Michigan offensive line look extremely weak. That would be big for them throughout this season, making them contenders. That's going to do it for our uh, summary of why Notre Dame are national title contenders, yeah. Mike. They're in the picture. 
This was brought to you by Eckridge. Don't forget to pick up Eckridge Smoked Sausage at your local grocery store for this weekend's tailgate or home gate party. And make sure to visit EckridgeFootball.com for great game day recipes and to enter the season-long Million Dollar Challenge.